Okay, so at the end of the lecture on Tuesday, I started to work out an example here uh, that could be, uh, the physical setting would be like temperature diffusion uh, in a 2D domain or po possibly pressure diffusion in a porous media. Uh, the governing equation is here, and I'm using this discretization, or I define this discretization with this global node numbering scheme. Uh, for the local node numbering scheme of an element, we're going to use a consistent node numbering scheme like this. And so we'll go ahead and solve this problem now. And again, I'm going to do this in sort of a very step-by-step -step fashion and not necessarily the way you would write it uh, for a generic uh, finite element code. But the first thing we're going to do is develop the element shape functions uh, for a quadrilateral with linear interpolation. So that's our interpolation basis. And then we're going to evaluate it at <clears throat> all the nodes. So again, using this node numbering scheme, we're going to evaluate it at node 1, which would be 0, 0 in a local element coordinate system. Uh, and then we're going to use uh, node 2 would be A0, node 3 would be AB, and so on. So with that, we have So our shape functions are x inverse a. So those are our three, I'm sorry, four, rather, four, I'm sorry, four, one, two, three, four shape functions. And so now we need to construct uh, the B matrix, which is basically uh, the derivative of all the shape functions. So the first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of each shape function with respect to x. Okay, and we need to basically build a table that goes from i from 1 to the length of nn. So that'll, that'll give us all the shape functions, the derivative of each shape function there. And then we'll do the same thing, uh, taking the derivative with respect to y, and then the last row will just be the shape functions themselves. syntax error. So there we go. So now we have the B matrix. Uh, the C matrix is going to be, we, we just have a, a constant coefficient. So we have K, 0, 0, 0, K, zero. Zero, zero, zero. And so now we can develop a stiffness matrix for the element is going to be the integral, double integral. of B transpose dot C dot B. We're going to integrate uh, 
dx dy from 0 to a and 0 to b. So there's our element shape function. Again, this should look exactly like what's in the notes um, for this node numbering scheme. So now we're going to make use of a, the connectivity array. Um, so basically, the way we're going to do this is we're going to read off uh, the global node no numbers in the order of the local node numbers uh, on each element. And then we're going to go in element sequence. So for element one, we'll read off 1, 2, 6, 5. For element 2, we're going to read off 2, 3, 7, 6, and so on. And so we'll just do that. So just double check here, 1, 2, 6, 5, 2, 3, 7, 6, 3, 4, 8, 7, 5, 6, 10, 9, 6, 7, 11, 10, 7, 8, 12, 11. Okay, so it looks like that's correct. And we'll now allocate the space for... our global stiffness matrix. It's going to be a 12 by 12. That's because there are a total of 12 global nodes. By the way, uh, normally, you know, you're the, for this connectivity array, this would be something that's given to you by your mesh, meshing software. So you wouldn't actually um, construct it by hand like we did for the simple problem. So now we're going to use the connectivity array to symbol are global stiffness matrix. So there's our global stiffness matrix. Okay, so we need to go ahead and populate our right-hand side vector. So we're going to start off with a constant array. It's also going to have 12 entries. And we sort of have a modeling decision to make here because we have this distributed uh, kind of a central boundary condition here. But the problem is, if you notice, it's a cosine function, right? So really, you know, if you drew it, it would it would be a, a partial cosine here on top that, that went down to zero at 3a, right? Um, but you'll notice that, uh, or well, if you remember, we're we're only using linear shape functions, so we're not, you know, the distribution between the nodes nine and ten can only be limited, uh, can only be linear, due to the nature of the shape functions. So we're not going to be able to accurately capture um, the cosine function if we distribute it via the shape function. So we're just going to use a modeling decision here that instead of evaluating uh, the force and distributing it via the shape functions as a distributed load, we're instead just going to um, evaluate at each of 
the nodes 9, 10, and 11, and 12, we're just going to evaluate this function at those locations. So what I mean by that is that at node 9, which is a equals to 0, of course, then we're going to have uo cosine pi x over 6a, and we're just going to evaluate that at x equal to 0, right? And then we'll repeat that at node 10, x is equal to a, at node 11, x is equal to 2a. Okay, so then on this side, for nodes 4, 8, and 12, they're, they're all, z, you know, u is equal to 0. So we can just do that in one shot. 4, 8, 12. Those are all equal to 0. So now if we look at what f is, we have this, okay? So now we need to modify our stiffness matrix so that it's not singular. We'll do that, uh, we'll use a little trick. Um, we can use a sparse array so that we only need to uh, say that the ninth entry, so the ninth entry has a, oop, the ninth entry is equal to one in a total array that has 12 entries, right? And so that, then we get this. All right, and then we can put that in a loop, right? And we'll loop over every i entry where i is in the array 9, 10, 11, 4, 8, 12. All right? We're going to do that for every ki row. So now if we look at k, we, you can see the ones on the diagonal here. So these are all in the locations, and, and the fourth one as well, in the locations where uh, you have a, a fixed boundary condition, OK? So with that, I mean, we're ready to solve. We can say linear solve kf, and that's the solution. We'll, we'll plug in some values. Um, we'll say that uh, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, uo is equal to 1, and uh, So then there, there's our solution, and uh, you know we can go ahead and plot this. We can say uh, contour plot. And this will take a second to type out, because I have to type in every node location. So at 0, 0, let's give this a name. With 0, 0, we have Sol. So that's node 1. Uh, node 2 is at a location. Um, well, maybe I should put in A and B, and then we'll just put in the numbers at the end. So that way it'll be consistent with, um, with the way we did this up here. So if I say um, so we have 0, 0, A, 0, that's node 2. Node 3 is 2a, 0. Node 4 is 3a. So 
So node five is B zero, A B two A. This is two B. Two B two B and we'll evaluate that at A one B one. This is a sorry. Should be list contour plot. Right. So there we have that, and we can uh, make it look a little better. We can set the aspect ratio correctly. Two over three. I think we can give it a detailed theme here. So we have a legend. So, so there it is. I mean, and, and so you can see, uh, you know, the warm colors are closer to one, and the, the cool colors are closer to zero, which is consistent with what you'd expect. If there's no diffusion or no temperature along this edge set, um, then then that would be zero, and it'd be the highest where the at the you know cosine equal to zero here. One, right? So, this is how you solve that problem, and you know you can you can make changes like uh, if you had a uh, diff little bit different elements. Um, so now the uh, Something like that. Uh, if if A was twice as long as B, right? Uh, see the aspect ratios would be something like that, right? So anyway, that this is how how you'd work that example.